it's Monday morning and I did get two more orders overnight so I'm going to go ahead and pack those up quickly because I want to be able to get them shipped out today as well with the rest of the orders and I'm also going to be activating the heat packs this morning as well so I'll show you guys how I do that so let me show you guys the two orders that we got overnight for the first order we have this philodendron strawberry shake and we also have this alocasia cupria and for the other order we have this philodendron milano chrysum philodendron jungle boogie and lastly this aglionema cm variegated so this one is a big order and they also got a two pound bag of my soil free potting mix i'm going to quickly go ahead and get this stuff packed up because it is early in the morning and i do have to start work soon so i am trying to get all this stuff done so that i can clock in for regular work and start my day So for the heat packs, I do use uni heat packs. This is what they look like. I use the 72 hour one. Comes in this little bag and then when you take it out, it looks like this. And on the back, it has a removable sticker because the back of it is sticky so you can line it against the box. And all you do is just like move around the stuff inside of it and you can shake it or whatever. And once you get it like all smooth, within like 20, 30 minutes, this will start to heat up. Sometimes you can feel it right away. So I just take the back off and then I just stick it on the side of the box. And then I just cover it with some of the polyfill and that's it.
so back in December, one of my friends sent me a little care packet. Her name's Aaliyah. I've definitely mentioned her before on here. She's always really nice and she sends me things that she thinks that I could use for the business, which I seriously appreciate and I love her for that. She recently sent me these little prop containers right here. If you're a plant person, you've definitely seen this or a variation of this before. It's basically like a little prop box. It comes with the base and it comes with the little trays here. And what makes it really special is that it comes with a lid that has a vent on it so you can twist it to close it and twist it to open it to let air in. She sent these to me because she knows I am interested in doing some like outdoor gardening. Um, James and I have been talking about probably trying to grow some vegetables this year so we definitely have to start soon I have to start researching that but she sent these to me so that I can start my seeds in here but if all else fails I'm definitely going to be using these for like allocations and things like that too so I am really excited for these I'm just going to also store these over here so that I can see them so that I remember to use them I'm pretty content with how the plant room is looking now. I really, really like it and I feel like everything kind of makes sense. In the last vlog, I completely flipped the layout of this room. I did that because I felt like I just needed a whole refresh in here and I'm just very happy with how it turned out and how I did everything. I did do a whole tour of the actual room in that previous vlog, so make sure you go check it out. But today I wanna give you guys the final tour because I did change up all of my personal plants and I did rearrange some of the shop shelves and the shop plants as well. So in the back of the room, I decided to put all the shop plants and not mix in my personal plants just to keep it a little bit separate. So currently I do have four shelves dedicated to just shop plants, one, two, and three here. Those are for all the plants that are already on the shop or plants that are like up and coming that need to go on the shop. And then I dedicated the shelf on the left now for rehabs and like small propagations, stuff like that too. The shelves all pretty much stayed the same. I didn't really make any major changes or like structural changes to them besides this one here that you're seeing. This one was configured to only have two shelves. So I had a top shelf and then the bottom one. The top shelf was dedicated to all the plants that I would get in for the shop that are just kind of big and they don't fit in the regular like size shelves. So I would stick them there. And then the bottom, I used to use it for like water propagations and stuff like that. But as of lately, I haven't really been doing many propagations and if I do I've been just doing small plants or I've been just putting them in a cup of stratum. So that shelf was definitely a waste of space and it just wasn't getting utilized. So I decided to reconfigure this whole shelf. So now I have one, two, and then one more at the bottom down here. I like this so much more because I can still fit all the big plants. So now I have the top shelf and the middle shelf for big plants. And then I have the bottom for just any extra plants. But I also decided to include three acrylic plant display cases on the shelf as well for some of the more rare plants. I have two side 
side-by-side -side, and then I have one stacked on top. This product is something that I do sell in my shop and don't worry, it is on the way. You guys can expect to see this probably in February. It takes a few weeks for it to get to me, but it is on the way. This product is so awesome because it's airtight and it's great for your propagations or if you just wanna display some really cool plants or anything like that. So I do keep some rare plants in here like some rare allocations. And then we have some Burl Marks flames in here that are in the growing phase. So I'm waiting on those before they go in the shop. And then I put one more up here just for the future because I did order a new batch of plants today. So they should be coming within the next few weeks. So I just wanted to make sure that I had the space planned out. So you just open them like this and then I can access them. So you can either have them standing vertically like this with the door on either side, or you can have it horizontally like this. And then you can have the door come down or pull it up however you want it. But this product is super cool because there are little notches along the sides and the top so that if you buy another one, you can easily like stack them together without it shifting. So that is what I did with this shelf. And I feel like now this space is just going to be utilized much more because I can't really control the type of plants that I get for the shop when I order them. I don't see pictures. I don't know how big they are actually gonna be. And sometimes I end up getting these really large plants and they just don't fit anywhere. So I'm happy now that I do have two shelves dedicated for the big plants. I try to stay away from the big plants because they are hard to ship, but like I said, sometimes I just don't know what I'm gonna get. So these two shelves are identical. They just have four shelves. And then on the very tops, I just put some more acrylic plant display cases. I think I'm just going to utilize the tops of the shelves just for acrylic plant display cases because I do have a lot of little props that I've been propping in stratum and they fit perfectly in there. So I really like them for that. So all these plants are already for sale except for those two bins on the top on the left, those two are going to be dedicated for up and coming props that are almost ready. So when I have a prop, I can move it to that bin. That's how I know for the next week that these can be restocked. Then the last shop shelf is this one here. And don't laugh because I know it's a little bit pathetic, but this is going to be specifically for propagation. So the top and the middle will be all propagation. And then the two on the middle are dedicated to rehabs. And these are just all like the graveyard plants, I call them. Basically all healthy roots just have no leaves. So I just stick them down there and then I just wait for them to put out a leaf and then I sell them. Sometimes when I get the wholesale orders, they do suffer a lot of stress because they get tossed around in a really big box and UPS just does whatever with them. So a lot of the times, a lot of the plants will lose their leaves and then at some point they're gonna put out a leaf and then I can sell them. And then this shelf right here is just going to be dedicated towards some of the bigger propagations. So for instance, like this Esqueleto, it's obviously way too big. So I do just keep them in these little plastic cups. These ones in particular have a mixture of perlite and stratum. And this is great because I can just sell them as is. All I have to do is just pack them up. And this is where I'm going to be keeping them. And if I decide to do any water props as well, I'm probably going to sort them in the shelf too. And then at the top, I do have two more display cases. This one is a growing box. This is full of variegated micans that will be available probably really soon. They're doing so well. I'm just waiting on a lot of them to start putting out more leaves. And then I just have this one reserved for anything else I decide to put up there. And then I just have a small tray up here in case I get any like little tiny seedlings or something like that, that I can just shove up there. So yeah, that is like the plant shop section. So let me show you guys all of my personal plants because I don't think I've given you guys a proper tour of my own house plants in a really long time. So here's a quick overview of my new shelving setup. These two shelves and the mills boat in the middle used to be on the opposite wall that I just showed you, but now I decided to move them on this side, which I prefer so much more. I reconfigured the shelves completely and I just love how everything turned out because I was really struggling with stylizing my own plants and I really don't have that many nowadays, but I wanted them to look nice in the background of my videos and I felt like I just wasn't getting that. Both of them used to just have two shelves only. So this one over here, I did add in an additional shelf in the middle here and I raised up the other shelf. So I think that this just looks so much better. This one is still two shelves, but I moved the middle shelf up a bit so that I could make some room for those plants down there. And then I have my mills built in the middle. I've always gone back and forth with, do I want to display shop plants or my plants in the Millsville? And I just decided 
I just need to display my own plants in there and let it be. When I have the shop plants in there, they come and go. So it's always like full one week and then empty and it just looks so ugly. So we're back to just my plants. This is just a mixture of some anthuriums and philodendrons and some other little things in here. So I definitely mix it up before this was just an anthurium only shelf, but I really like the look of it combined. So I decided to mix it up. So this is my anthurium queen. This is one of the last ones that I have. I have talked about queens in the past. They are absolutely gorgeous and they are one of my favorite plants to look at, but they are such a pain to grow. So I have gone through numerous of these, but this one is still hanging on. I'm pretty sure I got this from Equigenera at some point in my plant journey. Um, I don't really go to Equigenera at all anymore. I'm kind of over that. And I just keep it out here in room temperature, room humidity. I don't use any humidifiers in this room at all. And I've been in this environment for about six months now. Uh, the reason I don't use humidifiers is because I'm really nervous about it getting too humid in here and then it affecting like my computer and like electronics that I have in here. I don't know. I'm just like really worried about that because I need that computer. And I think that this queen is doing just fine in this environment. So it does have two leaves at the moment. I feel like it could probably be repotted soon and maybe it would put out another leaf, but it's still really nice as it is. I do hope that I can get this plant bigger. So maybe a repot is something that needs to be done. This one here is Anthurium Michelle. I've had this one for a few months now. I really love the Michelle because the new leaves come in this beautiful like dark purplish color and then they fade to the green. This one is also in need of a repot. To be honest, all my plants need a repot. It's just my least favorite plant chore, so I just don't do it. And I definitely prioritize the shop plants over my plants, but now that it's like the new year, I think it would be a good time to repot some of my personal plants soon. These frequently are on my shop. I think I have one on there right now. So if you're looking for an Ethereum Michelle, make sure you go check out my shop because I do have one at the moment. So this is what it's currently looking like. So this big one here, this is my Anthurium King of Spades crossed with a Anthurium Ace of Spades hybrid. This one is my biggest Anthurium that I have in my collection, I think ever in my whole journey. And I love, love, love this plant so much. It is so beautiful. This plant has flowered like three times and that's why it's looking not the greatest because it was focusing a lot on the flowers. It had like three leaves, but they all yellowed because it was focusing so hard on the flowers. It did recently just put out this leaf and it's still growing. So I anticipate this leaf is going to be way bigger than the last. You can see the size difference here. Um, this comes in a beautiful red and then fades to the green. I do occasionally have these on the shop as well. I do have a small one currently on there. So this one over here, I'm not going to pick it up because these anthuriums are freaking huge. Like this one is in an eight inch pot. This one's also in an eight inch pot. Like they are so heavy. This right here is literally my first ever anthurium that I ever got in my entire collection. This is a anthurium crystallinum crossed with a forgetti eye. This plant has gone through so many leaves and right now it's at a good size for me. It definitely was bigger in the past, but right now this is what the leaf size is looking like, which honestly is manageable for me because anything bigger, it just doesn't fit. But um, I've had this plant for a few years now and I really, really love it. Um, it's very easy going and I think it's gorgeous. Right now it has this leaf and it has one in the back as well. You can kind of see there. And then over here in the right hand corner, this is Anthurium Brielle Exara. I got this maybe a year ago from one of my older wholesalers that I had. Um, if you've been here since the beginning, oh my gosh. I used to drive three hours there and three hours back home to a wholesaler that I used to use. I don't use them anymore because it's just too hard of a drive. So now I do get all the plants shipped from a different wholesaler. This one was really expensive for some reason, uh, even at like a wholesale price. I definitely overpaid for it. They were kind of good at overpricing their stuff even at wholesale. So that's another reason why I don't like to use them anymore. It does grow bushy, so it does have a good amount of leaves on it right now. It's very easy going, very beautiful, and has like really nice like veining and stuff. And that one's currently in a seven inch pot. This is one of my pink princesses. This one is quite small, but I am just in the process of letting all my pink princesses just grow out because I feel that they just do so much better when you just leave them alone. But my other pink princess, which you'll see in a little bit, you're gonna love it. Um, it's so beautiful and pink right now, I love it. I'm pretty sure that this is 
a pup off of that one at some point but this is what it's looking like it's got some really pretty leaves this one is anthurium red mag cross with pap i had got a bunch of these for the shop and every single one lost every single leaf that they had. Two of them have pushed out leaves. I decided to just keep this one and then I'm going to put the other one up on the shop really soon. The leaf literally is just unfurling so it's not even hardened but it's really cool looking and I think it's really pretty. This guy right here, this is Anthurium Crystallinum crossed with Bessier app. I've had this one for a while as well. This is another Equigenera plant. Has only one leaf right now and that's definitely my fault because it totally needs a repot. So I will be doing that probably soon. But this one is really pretty. The reason I got it from Equigenera is because you know, sometimes you can find some cool hybrids and I hadn't seen this hybrid really anywhere else besides them. So I did pick it up that one time I went, but like I said, I haven't been there in probably almost a year now. I just have like a bad experience with them like a lot of the times. So I think I'm just like over them. This is just a random bottom cut situation of a Philodendron Red Anderson that I have. I use this one for propagation purposes. So it kind of grows like funky uh, and I just cut it like the other day as well. So in this display case here I have a mixture of little seedling plants and leafless plants as well but I do love little tiny plants and I tend to just cut them and just let them grow and then forget about them but I decided to put some of them here so that I could see them so that I could pay attention to them more. So I have a mixture of potting mix plants, fluval stratum, and pond in here. I just turned the brightness up on the camera because I felt like it was a little dark but this is Syndapsis jade satin variegated. I love Syndapsis so much and I wish people loved them too, but I love them so much. I don't know why, like they're just so cool to me. They're like one of my favorite like type of plants. So I love just propagating Syndapsis. So I have a ton just like everywhere. This is just one that I have growing out here. This is actually the little top cut of that Philodendron Red Anderson. This is what it looks like here. I'm probably gonna end up selling this um but for now i just stuck it in here this is a little doriaki seedling that i have and i'm growing just in regular potting mix in a little cup this is another anthurium seedling i really don't know what the idea is um i should have like wrote it down but i know it's like a magnificum cross with something but i just have no idea and it's been so long i've neglected the seedling forever so it just doesn't grow so it was in potting mix and it was just drying out so much that it wasn't growing so i recently decided to put it in stratum and it's doing way better this guy right here this is an alocasia black stem this is from my friend Aaliyah. she sent me a few alocasias a few months ago this one had another like big leaf, but it did yellow. So now it just has this one. Um, so hopefully we'll put out another like nice size leaf. And then in the back here, I just have some leafless plants, which I'm not even going to bother showing you because there's nothing to show. This is some type of alocasia. This is a philodendron strawberry shake. This is an anthurium queen seedling. It has a bunch of roots, but the leaf yellowed off and I just decided to cut it. So I'm just waiting on a new leaf down here at the very bottom. This is another like alocasia corm that is growing that I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know why I just don't like label like my plants. I really should start doing that because then I end up with random leafless plants that I have no idea what they are. The last shelf is not really full. It's just a few like random plants that didn't have like a proper space for them. This is my Philodendron Glorious. This is what it's looking like. It has these two leaves and then this one over here, which I need to like stake up and then it has like a new one coming in i also sell these moss poles on my shop too so if you're wondering where to get it from you can get it on my store um i've had this glorious for a while i do cut this one a lot and i prop it for the shop so a lot of my plants in my personal collection get cut and sold at some point so some things are part of my collection but some things i just keep in the shops collection if that makes sense like they're still a shop plant but they're like a shop mother plant so that is how i am able to bring like 
more expensive plants like at a smaller size i'll just keep them as a mother plant and i'll just chop them this is my philodendron jose bueno or jose bueno however you say it this guy has been with me for a really long time it's one of my favorite plants i love it it definitely needs a repot i've been avoiding the repot because it is a pond slash leca plant so it's already in like a really big pot so i've been avoiding it because it's just going to be so heavy like moving it to like a six or a seven inch pot. And then down in the very corner, this is another Philodendron Red Anderson. This is just like my personal collection one. Uh, it's like, all right. Um, the shop ones definitely look better, but it does sometimes put out really nice leaves like this one. And it, you know, it does its thing. Uh, I think at some point I'm going to get it off the plastic pole and just put it on a wooden plank instead because I just like the look of the plank and I have like a whole plank section that I'm going to show you guys soon. This is a Monstera Adinsonia aria that barely has any variegation at all. So I just let this guy just chill. It did have two really nice leaves. So I propped it and they're on my shop. The bottom leaves are very like low variegated. So I just been like waiting to see like what it does. So on the left, I have another shelf dedicated to my plants, which I'm going to show you next so this one still only has the middle shelf and then the bottom shelf but the middle shelf I moved it up a little bit and the bottom shelf I moved it down as you can see it's closer to the floor compared to that one over there I moved it down so that I could fit all the planks in there because I wanted the plank plants back upstairs um, I had the plank plants downstairs in my redsta and they were getting neglected like hardcore it is just like not good for me to have plants all over the house so i really don't have plants anywhere else besides this room i have a couple upstairs like maybe two that are just like in the hallway i have my big monstera downstairs because it's huge and maybe like four more like trailing plants down there and then the rutsa is like empty at this point as for the rutsa i don't know what i'm going to do with it right now i just have it downstairs turned off because i'm not using it right now but i also don't want to get rid of it because i do like the rutsa a lot i just I don't know. I just know, I know that my cabinets will get full again over time once, you know, I get more shipments in and, you know, I end up like taking cuttings and stuff like that. So right now all I'm utilizing is the Millsbo. The double detolf, I am in the process of trying to sell it because I just don't have room for it and I just don't care to have three cabinets right now. I'm getting so many inquiries on it. It's just nobody is committing to it. So, but hopefully soon I can get rid of it. At the top shelf, we still have my philodendron billy. As you can see, this billy is freaking huge. He takes up so much space that he needs his whole like own section. It's currently in a seven inch pot. It needs to be repotted into like eight or a nine, but even so it's just been pushing out leaves like crazy and the leaves are getting freaking huge the thing about the billy is that it extends out like this but i absolutely love this plant like i love like the bushiness of it it's like one of my favorites and i've had this plant probably almost two years now and it really fills in the space really nicely so right next to it i have this philodendron plow manii citrus i got this from echo genera as well and as you can see it looks exactly the same if you remember um i don't even know if i can even find a previous clip of this but literally looks exactly the same because every time a new leaf would come in the old leaf would go for some reason so it just has one leaf and it has one coming in uh, i do really like this plant because it is pretty and i like the color but um, I was definitely probably neglecting it as well. It could use a repot too. I just have this little Epipremnum Pinnatum Marble. I have a trailing because I don't have any trailing plants in this room and I think it'll be super cute once it gets long enough. I'm just sticking it over here and just letting it just hang down like that. On the left side of the shelf, I decided to incorporate this Ikea little greenhouse. I think it's called the Akbar or Akabar or something like that. I bought this a few months ago and I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't have not a damn thing in there. It's been just sitting downstairs on my Rudsa empty since I bought it. Like I really do think it's cute and I love the black metal. It matches like my whole like aesthetic in here. It matches my furniture downstairs. It's just downstairs, I don't keep a lot of plants. And I was like, why would I put little tiny plants down there? Like propagations, like I just wouldn't. Fills in the space pretty nicely here. So over here, this is Alocasia Corazon. This is another Alocasia gift from my friend Aaliyah. I have another one that is in the mills well that's growing really nicely too. I love the color. It's very different and very pretty. Then I just have two little Florida Beauty propagations over here. 
they are just like little babies. And then over here, I just have a little Philodendron Milano Chrysum in my collection. So in front of the little greenhouse, I just keep my other pink princess. This is my like nicer one. I love this plant. I am not a Philodendron Pink Princess person at all. I really don't care for them, but this one is so pretty. And I'm just so glad I decided to give this one a chance. This one had like no variegation and I kept chopping it and chopping it and nothing was happening. Finally, I decided to just let it go and do its thing. And now it just looks like this. I didn't do anything special. Pink is my favorite color and this is such a pretty vibrant, Pink princess and then hanging from the top shelf I have a small Hoya compacta variegated I've had this one for a little bit in my collection but I was keeping it downstairs I've been talking about wanting a bigger Hoya compacta variegated for a while I want like a really really like big one they're kind of like hard to find for some reason or they're like super expensive but mine is like kind of small but I still really like it but since I've talked about me wanting like a bigger one, my friend here on YouTube, Jamon, I'm sure you guys know who he is. He recently sent me like a medium sized one in the mail and I have it in my mail as well. So I'll show you guys in a second, but that was like so nice of him guys. Make sure you guys go check out his channel. I think he's on a little break right now because he's finishing his last like semester of school or something. And he's just super nice. And that was really kind of him to send me another one. But this one is the one that I have in my collection at the moment. So hopefully it will grow. These are like really slow growers, but maybe in the future I'll find like a super, super long one. So moving on to the bottom shelf, I love how this turned out. A few months ago, I decided to buy these little wooden planks from Home Depot, I think, or Lowe's. I will link the video where I did that. I got these planks in like a pack of maybe like 10 or something, and they are meant for fencing. So they have like a point at the bottom and they are just like perfect for the plants. So I've been growing them on planks for a little while and some of them are doing really well. Okay, so this one is not on a plank, but I just wanna show you anyway. This is my Monstera Thai Constellation that I have at the moment. It did just put out this one here, really cute. And it only grows in moss and perlite, and that's that. <laughs> so every time I try to take this plant and put it in something else, I end up losing it. So moss and perlite for its rest of its life because I don't know what to do with it. This one has been so, so, so finicky over the last year. I don't wanna like be messing with it like that, but it's finally doing a little bit better. So it definitely could use a repot too. This is a philodendron white princess. This one has okay variegation. It's really not anything special. At one point it did have a solid pink leaf, which was super cool. This plant right here, this is my Syndapsis Jade Satin Variegated. This one's in a seven inch pot. It has grown so much, you guys, since the video where I first put it on the plank and if you can see here it has completely attached itself to the plank which is so so cool so i'm so happy with how this little project turned out it's reaching the top so i'm going to have to extend the pole and put it like somewhere else but i think for right now i think it looks good and i really love how the colors are i love the yellow and the green this is my monstera aria this one i was kind of like neglecting for a bit but i think it'll get better now that it's upstairs and i can pay more attention to it because I'm upstairs more than I'm downstairs sometimes so the plants downstairs kind of get like neglected this is the most recent leaf so it does have a really nice like color to it so down here in the corner I have another syndapsis down here this is syndapsis silver hero this one is starting to attach itself to the plank as well so I'm really excited for it to grow bigger and it has these really pretty like silverish blue leaves. This guy over here, this is my Monstera Adansonii Mint. It's been with me for quite a while. It's actually in a mixture of Pond and Lekka and I have it on the plank and it's very happy. I believe this plant was an import um, a really, really long time ago. I don't import plants anymore. It's way too much work and the thought of losing like thousands of dollars in plants like is just not, it's just not it. So I don't import anymore but um, I'm pretty sure I got this as an import like collaboration I did a few years ago on Instagram or something like that. Since then, I don't really do like many collabs anymore because I just don't have the time, but I'm pretty sure this guy was an import like collab situation. And then at the very bottom, this is my Philodendron Jungle Boogie. I did recently cut him, so he does have a growth point here but I've had this Jungle Boogie forever. I just don't wanna let it go. I really love it. I recently put it on the plank, so I think it's gonna do much better on the plank now. 
So moving on to my Millsville, I really hope you guys can see, I turned the brightness like all the way down because this cabinet is so bright. It is in no means like full at all. It is just kind of whatever right now. I just dedicated the top just to be like all seedlings and stuff that I'm growing like in my collection. I do have an acrylic plant display case in here. I really just have it in here for aesthetic purposes. It's already humid enough without the cabinet. It's not necessary. I just like it in here. And I like the idea that I can put stuff on top of it at some point. There are two pegboards in this cabinet. There's one here and then one on the bottom you'll see in a second. The pegboards, the accessories for the pegboards, like this little hanging shelf. And then there's two corner shelves in here. Everything is from Modern Aqua. Just wanna say that now because I know somebody's gonna ask me and that's where everything is from. So in this display case, I do have just random stuff in here. The cabinet is pretty much where I'm keeping majority of the Hoya. So this is a Hoya Fungi or a Hoya Fungi, however you pronounce it. This is a Hoya New Guinea Ghost. This guy's getting a little bit big, so eventually he's gonna outgrow this little box. This is another Syndapsis Jade Satin Variegated, just like a little one leaf. Another Hoya New Guinea Ghost. This is the other Alocasia Corazon that Aaliyah gave me. This one is doing really nice. And then this is like, I think three little props of Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. So I just keep those in there. At the top here, there is a little hanging shelf here. This is an Aglionema Seam Variegated. This leaf right here is on the way out, but this is just a little cutting of it. And I have it in stratum. Pretty much everything at this top shelf is stratum. Up here, I have like a little double cup method just because sometimes the fan will dry out the stratum fast. So I just have a cup over it. This is just a little, random bunch of Hoya Walliniana UT152. In the corner I have this one and this one here. These are the top cuts of one of the shop plants that I have. When they were provided it was told that they were Adansonia Albo. After like really looking at them, they are definitely not Albo. They are definitely Adansonia Archipelago. So the tops were completely solid white, as you can see here. I don't know what my goal is with this, but I didn't want to just toss it. And maybe in the future, they'll put out some more balanced leaves. You can definitely see the Archipelago in it, like the green over here. So definitely not an Albo at all. In the back corner, this is a pond plant. I don't want to take it out because it's like really far back there, but this is just a uh, Hoya Australis Lisa. I propagate this guy a lot for the shop, but this is my very first Hoya that I ever got in my collection. So then in here, remember how I was telling you guys how Leah got me these little seedling trays? I decided to use one for some of the small, small seedlings that I have right now. So this is what it looks like. This is so cool. I love this product so much. In here, I have four little plants. And this one here is a Philodendron Pink Princess. This was like a little pup that was just growing out of one of my Pink Princesses. So I just decided to pull it out. This is Philodendron Snowdrift. This is from my friend Breezy. This is a tissue culture plant that she sent me and it's putting out a new little leaf here. These are two corms of the Alocasia Corazones that Aaliyah got me. These two popped out out of the surface of the ones that I have in here. So I pop them in here. And then this right here is a little Anthurium duriaki. Look how tiny it is. This was a, another little pup that was just growing out of my little duriaki that I had. So I just pulled it out and stuck it in here. And then I have all this extra room over here for another tray in case I have more little seedlings. And then you just stick the lid on and then you can like twist it to like open it or close it. I have it like set to be like a little open, a little closed. This just like fits perfectly in here. So I love that. On the bottom half, there's not much going on. I've always removed the two additional glass shelves out of the Millsville. Um, I just have them stored away. This shelf at the top, this is the original glass shelf. I don't like using um, customized or modified like acrylic shelves for the cabinet. I actually don't think it's necessary fully to have acrylic shelving to replace your glass shelving unless it's going to be like like a half shelf or something like that and I don't think it's really necessary in my experience for me to have shelving with like holes in it it just I don't really care so so yeah those are the original glass shelves all right so on the bottom there is another pegboard here and then I have this little 
hanging shelf that hangs on it. This guy, I've talked about it before. I'll put the name on the screen because it's so hard to pronounce, but this is a succulent. And before you guys come at me, why do you have your succulent in the cabinet? I've had this plant forever. I've had it since it had no leaves on it. It was like, just like a little stump and I've always grown it in the cabinet. So I just keep it in the cabinet. I think it just does better that way. I don't know why. I used to have it on the shelf, but um, it was getting really crispy for some reason. So this is what it looks like. It does have little fuzzy leaves. It was way, way, way bigger than this, but I completely cut it down and I just decided to regrow it. This is Anthurium Red Mag Crossed with Pap. This is another one. This one is going to be on the shop very soon. I'm just waiting for these leaves to harden. For some reason, three leaves popped out of it all at the same time. I don't know why, but <laughs> that's what's going on here. So once this hardens, um, I'm gonna sell it. I just have it in here because I feel like maybe it will harden better if it's in like more humidity, you know? This is a cutting of Philodendron Domesticum variegated. Just a one leafer. This is what it looks like. And I just have it in a Pond and Lecca mix. This is Monstera Adansonia Albo. This is what an Adansonia Albo should look like, not what I showed you earlier. This guy right here, this is just a single leaf of Philodendron Milano Chrysum. This is Syndapsis Blue Albo. This is a shop mother plant like I was telling you guys about. This is specifically to grow it out so that I can take cuttings and sell it, but it is definitely a more high-end plant, so I'm gonna be keeping it in the Millsville. This right here is Hoya Multiflora. I recently just cut it. And as you can see, it does have some new little baby leaves coming out. This Hoya is really known for the blooms. It is very, very pretty when it blooms. This is my Hoya fungi. I just have it on this heart trellis here. It's so cute. I love the way it looks on the trellis. And then I have these cute little dragonfly clips as well. I'll put the trellis and the clips in my description below. They're from Amazon. This is my new addition. This is another Hoyo Compacta Variegated. This is the one that Jaman sent me. How sweet was he to send this over to me? And this one is really big. This one's in a five inch pot and it's really established too. It actually has multiple vines. So I'm really excited for this one to grow out because it will grow from like every direction. Thank you so much, Jaman, for sending this my way. I really appreciate it. So the only other area in this room that I keep my plants is in this corner by the window. Here is my Monstera Albo here. And I recently configured this little area this plant used to be downstairs up until like yesterday. This is Philodendron Giganteum Marble Variegated or Blizzard. It's like one of those, I'm not sure. But this is what it looks like. I just have it sitting on this little shelf. This is just like a little shelf I have. I'm gonna like replace it with something different. And then I have the elbow over here. So here's like a better view of the elbow. It just sits in the corner over here. The leaves are growing in every single direction because I would always have it facing this way instead of facing the window. So I'm trying to remember just to turn it to face the window so all the leaves will face the same direction. And here is an up close of the Giganteum. This is the newest leaf here. And I love this plant. I've had these plants on the shop prior. Um, they are just really, really large plants and they're hard to ship. But yeah, this is how this guy's looking. And I just have it in a basket that I got from Home Goods. So that concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been super productive lately with the shop and I'm really happy with how the room is looking. I'm happy with how the plants are looking. We have some exciting things coming up for the shop. I did just place an order of plants so you guys can be on the lookout for all new plants coming very soon. I also placed a order for the acrylic plant display cases so they are finally on the way. I know you guys are so excited for them. Thank you guys for being patient with me with getting them. They should be here in February hopefully it takes a couple weeks for them to ship out because I do order a lot of my non plant items from overseas I hope you guys enjoyed today's video I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you guys in my next one bye